and happy Friday. It's still breakfast time. Yogurt and granola. Um, today, just running to the grocery store to get the stuff that I couldn't buy at Costco. Uh, based on my meal plan for the week, there was really nothing that I needed to get at the farmer's market. My meals for the next week, I have enough meat in the freezer and fresh produce um, to get me through the next week. And so I didn't want to go just to buy stuff I didn't necessarily need. So again, got to watch our money, one income here. So no farmer's market today. So I'm just going to run to the grocery store because like I said, I just have a handful of items that I need based on this week's meal plan. Um, and a couple items for Mike's lunch and staples that we ran out of, like I ran out of mayonnaise, I ran out of taco mix, um, just some, a few odds and ends that I need to get. And then tonight's dinner is homemade pizza, which if you watched yesterday's video, we already have the pizza kits, the organic pizza kits from Costco. I have mozzarella cheese that I had frozen. I bought Mike some smoked Gouda cheese yesterday at Costco. I'm going to be putting um, onions and Italian sausage on his, which I already have here. Me, I just love a ton of cheese. I like mine plain. So that's all I'm going to have on mine. Um, so I'll show you how I do that. But again, it's pretty easy. I'm sure you've watched a pizza being made before and these pizza kits, which are not expensive, mind you, or I wouldn't buy them. Um, they make it super, super easy. I mean, the sauce and the crust is all ready to go. All you need is an oven and a pizza pan and whatever toppings you want. So super easy. So not a lot happening today. I need a bite for them. So I thought I'd start this video answering a question from, I guess, yesterday's video or day before or something. Somebody asked me, to tell a story of where I learned to cook. So, um, now I'm not a chef, by all means, y'all can see that. Um, as far as cooking, I love my cooking. Um, I think it has a ton of flavor. My husband loves my cooking. Um, when we got married, my husband weighed 158 pounds. My husband is now 240 pounds, and that's not from eating junk food. He loves to eat, and he loves my cooking. I didn't really learn from any one person. Um, my mother, um, God love her, she tries, but she's not the greatest cook. Um, so I didn't grow up in a household that I learned to cook from mom. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up. So a lot of our food was instant boxed food. Like, the only fish I ever ate growing up was whatever was bought in the freezer section of the grocery store on sale by Gordon's or Mrs. Paul's. So, um, yeah, never had good fish. Macaroni and cheese was always like the Kraft dinners in the box, the Kraft macaroni and cheese, only we didn't get the Kraft brand, we bought the generic brand because it was cheaper. Um, not everything came from a box. My mom would make meatloaf. My mom would make salmon cakes. And she would use salmon out of a can. I can't do meat out of a can. Just bleh. And I could never stand the smell of those salmon cakes. I had to eat them. That's what we had to eat. But to this day, I won't touch salmon, even good salmon. It, like, scarred me for life. So anyway, it's not that my mom was horrible at cooking. There are some things she's good at. Um, her spaghetti sauce, we make it homemade in our family. Um, like not, we don't buy the jarred bread stuff. We buy, and we don't crush her in tomatoes, but we buy cans of crushed tomatoes and tomato sauce and tomato puree and tomato paste and do all our own seasonings um, and put whatever kind of meat we want in it. And I did kind of adapt my recipe from hers. My mom can make a good roast beef, but that's taken her, she's 60, what year are we in? She just turned 64, and she's finally mastered roast beef. And she's famous, we call her the taco queen, because if all else fails, she can make a taco. And I'm not trying to 
talk bad about my mom because we all kid her about this. She'll be the first one to admit she doesn't like to cook. They do it to stay alive, and that's pretty much it. So that I'm just telling you this background because that's how I was raised. Cooking was not at the forefront in our house. You know, we were very busy when I was growing up. My last bite, hold on. Then I'll stop eating and talking. We were very busy growing up. I was an only child until my mom remarried when I was four. No. She divorced my dad when I was four. She remarried when I was six. And then I got a stepsister. But my stepsister is Kim. She never lived with us until I was 14, I think, when she moved in. So, um, when we would do events with the family, then we were always going to pick her up from her mom's house. We were very, very active in church from the time I was eight years old till they're still super active in the church. And when I say active, it wasn't just Sunday morning service. We would go to church three times a week, Sunday mornings, Sunday evenings, Wednesday evenings. And then you always had activities in the church. Um, and if you were involved in different organizations within the church. So church took up a lot of our lives. There was a softball team that my stepdad played on. And then when I started dating Mike, we met in church. He played on the softball team as well. So then you have two days a week when the weather's good that we're also going to softball games. And then school, I was involved in band. And that meant marching band, symphonic band, concert band, clarinet, choir. Um, so that took up a huge chunk of time. I was also involved in the YFU club, the forensics club. I was on the yearbook business staff, and I was on the school newspaper editorial staff. So cooking, there was never time for cooking. We had to eat on the fly many nights. And because there wasn't a lot of money, it wasn't eating out in restaurants. Every once in a while, we would hit, like, Burger King. Um, which I'm not even sure if Burger King is worldwide. I have no idea. So if you're not in the States, it's going to be like a McDonald's, only a little better. Um, so we didn't eat out a lot. Now my grandparents, on the other hand, my grandma is a great cook, very traditional Pennsylvania Dutch cooking. And every Sunday from the time I was little, that was always kept for family day. And we would go to my grandmother's house, and she would cook a great big meal the big roast beef dinners and pot pie dinners or she would just make big kettles of soup like potato soup and chicken corn soup and chili so I got to see a little bit of cooking when we would show up early at my grandma's house and I'd watch her um, a lot of times the day before a holiday I would sleep at my grandma's house and like Thanksgiving we make traditional turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, gravy, all that. And I would spend the night at her place Wednesday night before the Thursday dinner. And we would be up by 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, chopping the onions and the celery and frying them in butter to put in the stuffing. So I had those occasions growing up to watch her. And like I said, when we would get together with my grandparents, food was the focus. So daily basis, food wasn't a priority. Times with my grandparents, food was a priority. And then my grandparents were the ones to always treat us to going out to eat. From the time my parents divorced, again I was four, every Friday night my grandma and grandpa would take my mom and I and then eventually when my mom started dating my stepdad, he would go along as well. And we would go to a very nice steakhouse here in York. And I was getting my own steaks when I was five years old. I was never a child that grew up eating kids' meals. Like a kids' meal at a fancy restaurant, never. Like a chicken nugget meal, never. Um, my grandparents ordered me a steak. I ate it. I ate the baked potato and I ate salad. And again, this was from the time I was five years old. And my steaks were always ordered medium rare. So that's how I was, I was raised. If you look at my... Um, YouTube page, you'll see where the, the area where it describes what my channel is about. I list my two passions in life as travel and cooking. And the two kind of go hand in hand. 
and I'm, I feel like I'm rambling, but this is all to come, it'll come together. Um, so, I went to travel school when I was 30. I got my degree in travel and tourism. My backup would have been culinary school. Um, somehow travel won. It just seemed a lot more fun and a lot less work. A lot less work. <coughs> um, but when I travel, it's all about the food. Like, I love going to foreign countries and experiencing their culture and their day-to-day -day life and how they eat. Like when I went to Ireland. Yeah, we toured a lot of... I don't know why I went to Yeah, we toured a lot of awesome stuff in Ireland. And Ireland is a fabulous country. But my favorite part was when we were done all the activities for the day and the touring and the sightseeing is we, would, we went down to the local pub with our bus driver who was the cutest little old white haired man. We went to the pub with him, which Irish people, that's their life, that's what they do. And we sat at the bar, me and the other travel agent I was with, and like we got to just talk to him and experience his world and how they drink their beer and what kind of foods they order and what is a staple for them as far as meals go on a regular basis. So again, when I travel, I love to eat and I love to experience the different foods. So I think, I don't think everyone can learn how to be a good cook because to learn how to be a good cook, you have to want to cook and you have to like to cook. Again, my mom doesn't like it. She doesn't like to cook. And um, you're not going to be good at something that you don't want to do or don't like to do. I think the number one key in cooking is you have to have the time to do it. You can't expect to have a fabulous, wonderful, tasty meal on the table when you have 15 minutes to get it prepared and on the table. Unfortunately for a lot of people in today's world, they, their, their priorities are different in that they work very long hours and then they're involved in multitudes of things and I'm not saying that's bad, um, I'm just saying it's all on where your priorities are. So they don't have the time to plan and prepare. Um, so I didn't learn this stuff from any person. I just kind of figured it out as I went along. I also do watch a lot of um, Food Network when the TV is on in our house, which isn't that often, but when it is, I love the Food Network. I love Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, um, The Pioneer Woman. I used to watch Rachel Ray, not so much anymore, because she just cooks with so many peppers and onions constantly, and y'all know that's not my thing. Um, who else am I watching? Oh, um, Trisha Yearwood. Uh, what's the name of her channel? I can't remember, but she's married to Garth Brooks and has her own cooking channel. Um, I used to watch Paula Dean a lot, so I've learned a lot by watching the cooking shows on television. I also love um, a YouTube cooking channel called Laura in the Kitchen, and I think I've mentioned that in other videos. Um, her name is Laura Vitale. She was born in Italy and moved here to the States as a teenager, and she has a great YouTube cooking channel. And she was just picked up by the Cooking Channel Network, and she now has a show called <coughs> Simply Laura. I haven't been able to watch it, but we don't get it here. Um, we don't have the cooking channel on our cable lineup. So hopefully I can maybe start seeing it online. Like I said, this is new, so they're not really in syndicated reruns yet. So I've learned a lot just by watching other people. Um, so I don't really have a story on how I learned to cook. I think it's just a combination of how I was raised and the fact that I love to do it and I do think I'm kind of old school in the fact that I still place a huge priority on women taking care of their husbands 
and I don't want to start any drama here because I know that that used to be the normal way of life here in the States. I know it's not like that anymore, but there are still those of us that want to do that. I seriously enjoy being <coughs> a stay-at-home wife at this point in my life and making good food for my husband who works freaking hard. The man works 65 hours a week and it's laborious work and he's on his legs all day. I love being able to have a hot, good meal on the table ready for him when he walks in the door. It wasn't always that way. I've worked full time in my life. Um, I still did the best I could at the time with making sure we had homemade food on the table, but there were times, especially when the kids were little, um, I shouldn't say little, when they were grade school and I was working full time and they were junior high and I was working full time and I would work later into the evenings when I was working as a travel agent. I've made potatoes out of a box. I've made macaroni and cheese out of a box. I've never made meat out of a can. Um, and we ate our share of hot dogs. Um, but if I don't have to cook that way, I don't want to. Um, again, it's all I think in what you want. And that's something that I want to do and I truly love doing it. Now, don't get me wrong, every once in a while, Mama needs a break and I could use a nice restaurant meal, and we do on occasion eat out. But through the week especially, because my husband does work such long hours and he has to get to bed early, we don't schedule anything through the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night, we are at home eating home-cooked meals, um, with Thursday being leftover home-cooked meals. Um, again, it wasn't always that way. But we've made that a priority at this point in our lives. And that's easier said than done, especially if you're younger and you still have children at home. They tend to kind of like rule your schedule and rule your world. My kids are old. They don't even live around here. So now Mike and I can just, you know, we can plan our lives just based on the two of us. And that's something we choose to do. So that's kind of my story and how I learned to cook. Um, I'll, I give tips here and there as I'm cooking. Um, meat seems to be intimidating for people who eat meat. Um, the only tip I really have is you need time. Unless you're grilling something that you want to sear, um, when you're cooking meat, especially in the oven, the easiest and best tip I can give you is low and slow. Keep your temperature down and do it slow in a nice slow roast. Um, again, it always depends on what you're cooking, but I think that applies more often than not, that you can't rush good food. Now I know there are chefs out there that work in very high-end restaurants and you kind of, you, you, you got to rush the food a little bit to get it on the table for the patron in the restaurant. However, before those doors open for dinner that night, that chef has done hours of slow preparation. So your prep is important, and depending on the meat that you're cooking, the time you have to do it is important. So that's kind of all I can really say about my cooking and how it turns out the way it does and never be afraid to try new things and never be afraid to try new cuisines. Um, here in the United States a lot of people that live here have the mentality that we are the best and there's no other country greater than us and that is such bull crap. We are a baby of a country. I love going to Europe you realize how much of a baby the United States is when you travel abroad and their their cuisine is so much healthier than ours those people are so much healthier than us so I encourage you those of you that are here in the States get out of that box that we have put ourselves in get away from the fast food and 
start learning about other cultures and how they eat and what they eat and the times they eat and you'll see how much healthier other countries are compared to us here in the United States. And again, I'm no model citizen when it comes to that, um, but I see the, the epidemic of obesity in children here in the United States and it's terrible. And y'all know what it comes from. Our lives are so busy that they're eating junk, they're eating processed food, and I do not trust our federal government at all whatsoever when they tell us that the additives and the preservatives they are putting in our food are safe for human consumption. No trust at all, do not believe them. So my other tip that I, I'm going to shut up then, my other tip I can tell you is whenever you can, start with the basics. Fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, fresh meat, and cook it from scratch because the stuff that you're buying that's already prepared like in the freezer section and the canned stuff and the box stuff, there is so much crap in there. The easiest way to look at it is if you pick up an item and you read the ingredients and there are more than three or four ingredients on that list, put it back on the shelf, make it yourself. Hey, that one rhymes. Put it on the shelf and make it yourself. Put it back on the shelf and make it yourself. I might have to use that in the future. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to take my dog out to go potty one more time, and then I'm off to the store. Hey, everyone. So I am back from Walmart. So I'll show you what I got. First, we'll start with some things I picked up for the wedding. I picked up two chalkboard signs. My daughter and her fiance, <clears throat> I can't remember the name of the song, I can't remember the group that sang it, but the chorus goes, I will walk 500 miles and I will walk 500 more, and goes on and on. Well, that's like their favorite song together, but they can't really use that as the uh, bride and groom dance because it's too fast. So I thought to incorporate that into the wedding somehow, I bought these signs, I'm going to write on one, I will walk 500 miles, and on the other one, and I will walk 500 more in some colored chalk that I bought. And then we're going to hang those in front of them on the bridal table. And then I got bubbles. Um, this is what people are going to blow as they are introduced as Mr. and Mrs. that come back the aisle and then I got some mint green ribbon that I have to take the time and tie on the top of all those. That's going to be a tedious pain in my butt. Maybe I could pay somebody to do that for me. <clears throat> and I just got a little glass dish to put them in and I'm going to wrap some. Sorry about that. My memory card filled up and my camera shut off. So anyway, I'm going to wrap some kind of either gold or mint green ribbon or lace or something around this and put the bubbles in there. And I got my husband his protein shakes for his lunch. One is a strawberry banana and one is a vanilla. I got two marinades, the Island Wood Fire Grill that I used on my pork chops the other night and a Brazilian steakhouse. I got two packages of au jus gravy mix some Hershey bars for my freezer for a snack because like chocolate is perfect. Um, my husband loved Merle Haggard and Walmart had this 40 number one hits of Merle Haggard so I picked that up for him. I got a Father's Day card for my father and a graduation card for Ellie's party tomorrow plus a Walmart gift card for her. Some ranch dressing that I was out of Mike's favorite olives because they're almost all. I got a teriyaki marinade and I got a Caribbean jerk marinade. Definitely using this one Monday night. This 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 one Monday night with our shrimp. Um, taco seasoning mix because I was out of it and I made myself a taco salad as part of the leftovers the other night because I had leftover ground beef and I had no taco mix. So like I had no taco flavor in the taco salad. It was kind of weird. So I made sure I put that on my list. Got some bread. I, we're going to use this this week instead of those English muffins because we normally keep English muffins and we eat those all week long, but needed to change it up a little bit. Yogurt for Mike. 
mayonnaise because I used the rest of mine for my cucumber salad this past week. Some frozen hash brown potatoes. Two boxes of rice, a Spanish rice with pasta, tomatoes, and bell peppers in it, and then my yellow rice, which is my favorite. Another bag of the Doritos Mix, the Taco Explosion flavor. I had bought a bag of that, you probably saw in last week's haul, and I took it to the mountains, and there wasn't much left, so I just left it there, so we got another bag. And then I got Mike some breakfast biscuits for work, a blueberry, and a mixed berry. And then I said I wasn't going to market, but I went to market anyway, mainly because your county strawberries are now in. So these are strawberries that come from here, your county, Pennsylvania. So you'll notice that they're much smaller than like a California or a Florida strawberry. And the taste is totally different too. It's hard to describe. I mean, a strawberry isn't a strawberry. Depending on the region of the world that they're grown in, they're going to have a different flavor. And these are very unique. Um, I don't think they're quite as sweet as like a California or Florida berry. Um, and they're definitely not as firm. Like these were probably just picked yesterday and we're going to eat those tonight because they will not last long. So I got two quarts of those and I'm going to make some shortcake this afternoon. I got a cantaloupe. I got six ears of the bicolor corn. And then this is a horseradish cheddar cheese spread that one of the Pennsylvania Dutch stands makes homemade and sells. Um, and I love dipping pretzels in this and crackers. So, again, just a snack for Mike and I. So that's it for my grocery haul for this week. Done shopping. Don't need anything else. So now I'm going to put this mess away. And I made it home and unloaded just in time because now it is just pouring. We're supposed to have nasty storms today. Maybe a peak of sunshine tomorrow, which tomorrow will be Saturday and then really bad storms on Sunday with hail and the possibility of tornado watches on Sunday. So yeah, it's not going to be a good weekend here, but at least all we have planned outside is Ellie's graduation party and that's tomorrow when they're not calling for rain. So I can handle a little bit of rain because we need it, the farmers need it, I'm okay with it, but again, I'm not the one that's outside in it either. Okay, so you saw earlier that I did buy two quarts of our local York County strawberries. So now I'm going to make the shortcake for that dessert. Very basic recipe. I cheat. I use Bisquick. You can find it in any grocery store. You can also make your own Bisquick. I have seen other YouTube videos where women will make their own. But I buy it right out of the box. So, um... All this is is two and a third cups of Bisquick, which I have in the bowl. I've also added three tablespoons of butter. To that, I'm adding a half a cup of milk and three tablespoons of melted butter. And that's it. Pretty simple. Just mix it together, put it in an ungreased baking dish, and then it's going in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or until it's done. Again, you'll have to watch your own ovens, everybody's ovens. Cook at a different temperature. So when the top is nice and golden brown, you know it's done. And in the meantime, good look at that. Aren't they just the two cutest things ever? Okay, so shortcake just about ready to come out of the oven, almost. In the meantime, I'm going to start working on the toppings for our pizzas. 
Like I said earlier, Mike's going to have his with some Italian sausage, which I had fried this up last time I made homemade pizzas, and we didn't use it all, so I froze it. All I've done is thaw it out. And in the meantime, I'm going to start caramelizing some onions and mushrooms. Mike will be eating his with some, with some smoked Gouda cheese that I just shredded for him. That was what I just bought at Costco yesterday. And then I'm boring old extra cheese pizza. So that's where I'm at. Again, I'm just going to start frying these up. And I'll show you along the way as it progresses. Alrighty, my shortcake is out of the oven. So again, a beautiful golden brown, and that's it. Just let it cool, and you're ready to make strawberry shortcake for dessert. So my onions and mushrooms are nice and soft. Now I'm just going to add the Italian sausage and warm it up a little bit. Oh, what the heck, we'll make it all. He'll eat it. All right, just don't let that go till it's all warmed up. All right, in the meantime, we're going to start getting these pizzas assembled. So again, because I'm using the pizza kits, it makes it extremely easy. So I just put the crust on top of a pizza pan, squeeze out the sauce, on each one. And we're going to spread that around. And obviously, if you like a lot more sauce, I'm sure you could just buy your own piece of sauce. Or if you really want to get creative, make your own pizza sauce. But this is sufficient for us. Now, I've never bought this brand of pizza kit before. I've never had an organic brand before, which is what this is. So I honestly don't know how good it is. So far it smells yummy. And part of tasting is a good smell. All right. Pour this out toward the edges. All right. Now my pizza is going to be super easy. Just a ton of cheese. Can you ever have too much cheese? I don't think you can. See, and I try my hardest not to make a mess, and of course I always do. All right, one more handful, and then that ought to be enough for me. All right. Now with Mike's, I'm going to put his toppings on under his cheese. Just so I can keep an eye on the cheese melting on the top. I don't like to have all the cheese covered up. I mean, I can't see if my cheese is melted properly. We're going to put all his mushrooms and onions and sausage down first. And then his Gouda cheese is going right on the top. My idea for using smoked Gouda actually came from the Cheesecake Factory. Um, not from a pizza, from a macaroni and cheese dish that they offer that's made with smoked Gouda. So I knew smoked Gouda could be used to melt, that it was a, a, a meltable cheese, because some cheeses you buy just don't melt very well. So anyway, when I was at Costco, I just happened to see it, and that's what made me buy it. It wasn't something I planned, it's just because I happened to see it on the shelf. 
So that's it. And sprinkle with Italian seasoning on both. And then they're going in a 450 degree oven until the cheese is melted. In the meantime, I got a hairy little bugger with four legs standing here waiting for cheese to drop on the floor. So that's it. I'll show you what they look like when they're done. All right, there they are, all ready to eat. Dinner time. There you have it, strawberry shortcake. All it needs yet is a little milk. Finishing up my night with one of my top ten favorites. And my crazy dog. Hi.